Welcome back, I'm Jerry again with the Happy Hootie. I'm sure you've seen a few of our other videos with regards to our 2022 Volvo S60 Recharge Extended Range Edition. But today I wanna to talk to you about the plug. Not plugging it into the car, but plugging it into the wall. Volvo has a fantastic plug. I absolutely love it because it can do two things. One, it can plug into a standard outlet in your wall. Again, we're in the US, so our plugs look like this. And so it goes in a standard 110, 120 outlet in your wall. Plug it in, the light comes on, shows you that it's working, and now you can go over and plug this in your car. That is great, but it takes about 14 and a half hours to fully charge that extended range edition, and that's a long time. So what I'd like to do is show you how we're going to switch this out to a 220, 240, and they make it super easy to do because even with the kit that comes with it, if you look on the back here, on the back of this back of this here, there's a little line up notch. If you twist that off and pull, it will remove this little dongle off the end for the 110. And they provide you with a different one that you can line up and put back on the same way. Now is a plug that looks like that. That works with a 20 amp 240 breaker or plug. Now it will no longer work in here in the US. You need to have the right type of plug. You also then have to have the right type of wiring and breaker to go with that if you're going to want to install one yourself. You're going to need a handful of things to get started. Let me show you what those are. So to get started, here's a few of the things you're going to want to have. You're going to want to have enough wire to get from point A, which is your breaker box, to point B, which is where you're going to have the receptacle that you're going to be installing. I have plenty of it here. This is 12 gauge wire, which is what's recommended for a 20 amp 220 or 240 breaker here in the United States. So I will be running 12 gauge wire. You're gonna to wanna to have a razor blade or a razor knife that you can then cut some of the outer sheathing on this. If you don't have the appropriate tool, this works to do that. A pair of wire strippers is certainly helpful. They also have wire cutters and strippers on this. We'll be using that. Electrical tape. You're going to need some of that, and I'll explain why later. You're also going to need a Phillips head, excuse me, Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. You can use power uh, if you've got it. Just for the all intents and purposes today, I'm going to be using the manual ones. You're going to have to have the appropriate receptacle or outlet, single outlet here for your 20 amp 220, 240. Here in the United States, they've got it maximum. This is a 20 amp 250. The wire that goes with the charger, this charger right here, is only a 16 amp 220, but that's okay. You just need to make sure your plug has the ability to be a little higher than that so this is not throwing the breaker. You're gonna to have a receptacle outlet box that will fit, for safety purposes, the size that you're going with here. So we've got that right there. And lastly, you're gonna to have to have the breaker that will work in your breaker panel. Now, if you're unsure of what type of breaker panel, or what breakers you have, take a picture of the inside of your breaker box and you can run it into Home Depot or Lowe's or some other hardware store and they'll be able to show you. But just for example, these are some of the different ones. You know, GE has a lot of breakers, Square D, Homeline, you know, Siemens, these other ones. Since I wasn't entirely sure, I went ahead and bought one of these that is a universal uh, breaker. Uh, it's probably not the best option that you could do. You'd want to match it, but this does work. And it is a UL classified circuit breaker, so I know that it's going to be safe. So let's pop open the breaker panel. You're going to need to locate your breaker panel. Typically, this is in your garage or your bedroom. I will tell you that it is going to be within a handful of feet from where your meter is on the outside of your house. So if you don't know where your breaker panel is, go look for where your meter is and then look on the inside and it'll probably be within a handful of feet from there because it's required to be within a certain amount of feet. I'm not an electrician, so don't quote me on that. Uh, make sure that you have ample uh, empty knockouts in your box so that you know that you have enough space for this 20 amp uh, 220 breaker because it is a double gang breaker pole like this. So it'll, it'll be a double wide. Looks like these are some square Ds that are in here. So we got enough room in there. Now before we go take the panel off here, to be extra safe, we're gonna kill the power. I've come out and located my meter. Look at that, look at that meter. He's just running backwards. It's because we've got solar panels and right now it's in the middle of the day. It's about three o'clock and those things are just scrolling back. Just feeding us some energy so that we can get paid by the utility company, which is great. But in here, there happens to be some main breakers, one that runs to the 
outbuildings that we've got here on property. It's a 200 amp switch and I've got one to the house. So we're gonna make sure we kill that before we take off the panel inside just to make sure we're not gonna kill ourselves. Using our flathead screwdriver or Phillips head, if it happens to be that, I'm gonna go ahead and twist on these and take these screws off of here so I can remove this outer, outer panel. And then we're gonna go ahead and lift the outer panel off of this and set it on the ground. And this will reveal the inside of your electrical box. Now, in order to get a wire into here, depending on where you're going to put your plug, now is when you need to, to worry about how long of cord or how long of a cord you're going to need. So in our particular case, and I'll run upstairs and show you how we're going to do this, I've already installed my plug right here. This is my breaker to my Volvo. I've got it plugged in right there and ran the cord. I went up in the attic and fed the cord down through the wall and poked it in right there and tied it in with the breaker and then snapped the breaker in place. So how do you wire up the breaker? Well, that's a good question. Let me show you on a different breaker. I'm gonna do this on the ground and make it a little easier so that you can kind of see how this works. But imagine that I've pulled this cord now through the top of my breaker box and I've got a lot of excess cord hanging out in front of the breaker box. Okay, this is a 12 gauge wire. It is a solid copper wire. And what you're gonna do now is using your razor knife, go ahead and put it down in the middle of this and lightly slice it open like this and that will peel back and show you the wires that you've got there and you want to make sure to strip back enough that you'll be able to work with them and you'll see inside of this wire you've got a white a black and a copper this normally is the hot line the ground wire which is the bare copper wire and the neutral line in our particular case, when you're doing a 20 amp 220, there is no neutral. They're both going to be hot wires. And this is where it can get a little tricky, which is why you've got that electrical tape. Because these both now, essentially you're gonna use them as black wires. They will both be hot wires. But what we're going to do is strip the ends of this. So on your wire strippers, you'll find where it says 12 gauge, is right there. And you can hook it over the end of this and giving yourself a little bit of play, bite down on it and pull off, revealing the copper tip. Do the same thing on the other one. Now you've got both lines where the ends are exposed like that. Now in your breaker panel, you're going to run this copper line over and hook it into the ground there'll be a whole string of grounds and I will show you that here in a second. And then these, instead of hooking it into a hot and a neutral, you're just going to hook them directly into your breaker. And again, since they're both hot, you're going to want to use some electrical tape. Some people use a red permanent marker. Uh, I went ahead and just used some black electrical tape to, to note that this is going to be hot and just go ahead and wrap quite a bit of electrical tape around this, essentially turning this white line black so that you will then know, or anybody else working in the box will know, that this is in fact a hot line and it is not a neutral line. So now they're both hot lines. On the back side of this, this is the part you'll see And you're going to hook these in by sticking one black underneath this part of the breaker and tightening it down, making sure it gets good and snug. And you're going to do the same thing for the other piece. So now you've got that good and firmed in there and you've got that attached into the ground line. Now you will take the back side of this It'll be in there like that when I show you. You're going to hook the back side in like that and then snap it in and that part will be completed. Now you've got your off 
and you've got your on. Let me show you this part in the box. There's our wire, it came down the ground. If you follow it, it goes down and I've got it tucked in to the ground bar where all those little copper wires are attached. Just find the spot. I think I piggybacked into that top one there, loosened up the screw and shoved them in there for the ground. On the other side of your breaker box, there's where all of the neutral wires go. You're not gonna be using the neutral wire though. Remember we taped one off that they're both gonna be hot lines. So when both of those lines came in, they went right in the back of that breaker there. Now it's on, now it's off. And again, it snaps in this way and then you push down towards the center and it locks it into that center channel there. Turn it back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, cover back on this. Then you're gonna run the wire. Of course, you've already run the wire. Run it up and over and down. I wanted mine in the ceiling, so I put it over right there. And I'll t you pull it through. You'll strip the wire similar like you did the first time. And then I'll show you how to wire up that plug. When you've located where you wanna have your electrical outlet and you've got your box, mark it on the wall. And then you're gonna go ahead and find out where that wire is gonna come in. If it's gonna come in from the top or from the side, in my case, it came in from the top. So you're gonna locate the circle on there. It's kind of a knockout and you're gonna punch that out. You just wiggle that back and forth a few times and that will break that off. There may still be a sharp edge, so try not to cut yourself. Then you're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. That gives you a hole that you can feed your wire through. Now there's a bushing that will go on here that you can screw down to clamp that wire down so that it doesn't catch on this because you don't want the wire rubbing on this sharp edge and shorten it out. So again, you've got to install that little bushing around there and then feed the wire down through, through there like that. And then screw down that bushing that clamps down over the top of it. But make sure to leave yourself enough room exposed out the end that you can cut that wire and split it like we did before. Once you've pulled this wire down through the outlet or receptacle side where you're going to be putting your, putting your plug for your 220, you're going to go ahead and cut and strip the wires similarly like we did before and go ahead and tape this off so that again, you know you've got the two hot lines. Now again, your power's off, your breaker's off. You've got a tester, you can test these, but if everything's unplugged and off, you can easily work with these safely. On the back side of this plug, you're gonna notice that there is two screws that are both gold. It's because both of those are going to be hot, which is where we're gonna wire both the black lines to. And you've got the green for your ground there on the side. That's gonna be for the solid copper wire. Now these, a lot of times they'll want you to put a little hook to get around the end of that. So you're gonna go ahead and clamp onto the end of this bend it a little bit and that'll kind of get you a little bit of a hook and get around where you can see it give you a little hook like that and you may need to kind of work with this sometimes you need to pinch it a little bit and get a little smaller i think got that one a little bit big a little hook like that and that will easily hook around your ground or excuse me black one will hook around your line here and then you're going to tighten it down now, one thing I will mention is that if you can get these little hooks facing in the direction when it goes around there, that as you're tightening this down, it will pull that hook around, it won't slip off. If you have it hooked on the other way, as you're tightening it down, it could unfurl that and get, leave it on there nice and loose. So to get it on there nice and tight, again, hook it around there to where when we tighten it, it's going to kind of coil it around there a little bit. And then again, using your screwdriver, we're just going to go ahead and tighten those down. It's hard for me to do this where you can still see it, but tighten these down on here like this. And then you're going to go ahead and repeat the process on the other three. Once you've got it all wired into the back, the wire came through here in the bushing and you've got it all ready to go, you're going to take this piece and line those two screws up, to pushing back all the wires. And then using your screwdriver, you're going to go ahead and screw those in. Once you've got that good and snug down on there like that, again, the, pretending the wires are all there, then you then need to put your 
cover on the front to keep people from sticking things or anything down in there. So they sell these covers that go over these as well. And that will seal that in there. They have plastic as well as metal. Uh, I went with a plastic cover on mine inside here, inside the garage. If you're gonna mount this under eave or something outside, uh, you'd wanna probably get something that would be a little more rated for weather. So what you'll be left with is something like that. It'll be mounted, mounted on the wall. And then using your plug, you can see that now it will plug into there like that. So I'll take you up and show you the, where I'm gonna plug this in. You may be wondering why I put mine up by the ceiling. Well, if I, if I parked on that side over there, I would have just put it on the wall, but that's the side my wife parks on. I park in the middle. So there's my car there, and we park the tractors and bikes and other stuff over here. So I didn't want to have a cord run all the way from the wall across the floor to hit it with the tractor, kids trip over it. So I've mounted it up here on the ceiling. So there's the plug that I've got there on the ceiling, which this will plug into. But I went ahead and put a little strap that I can let this thing hang from because I didn't want all the weight to just be hanging off this plug. So I'm gonna slide it in here and we'll get it plugged in. So the end result looks a lot like that. Now, to plug this in, just line it up where your plug is, plug that in. It comes on again, now it's running the 220, 240. Congratulations, you my friend have just installed a 220, 240 adapter for your car, you've wired it up, and now you can reap the benefits of only taking about five hours to charge up from zero to full versus 14. That is some time savings I can get behind. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.